Yes, indeed, once again it's on. Give thanks, give thanks and praise to the Most High who make all things possible. We are here in the local historical western area, you know, the last community we really got left. And I'm thankful to be a part of it, you know. I'm with some legendary brothers of mine here in the community from such time and still building. And um, it's good. We're going to be building on some serious topics today. This one here is about the solution. Yeah, because we have solutions for you too. You know, we ain't going to give you the problem. We coming with the solution. All right. So differently though, I'm here. This is Ross Isis. I got my brethren here. This is Bomani Tayimba, Africa for the Africans. My brethren. Sincere, the creative. Yes, I uh, And this is the, the Think, Think Champs. Champs. No doubt, no doubt. Peace and blessings. So we are in, we are building here about Africa for the Africans. Those at home and those abroad. These words were spoken by a wise man by the name of Marcus Messiah Garvey who uh, gave us the mission to forward to the east and look to the east. Forget we are in the west, never. This is where we are. We are westbound. And our forward home is eastbound. So Marcus Messiah Garvey spoke the words, look to the east for the crowning of your black king. All right? And the black king Christ has been crowned. Yes, he's been crowned. He sits on the throne of David. His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie. Yes, sir. The Almighty King of David, who sits on the throne. So this is real. We're in serious times. You know, things became color now. You know, we out of black and white. We seen much things clearer when we were in black and white. You know, because black people were more loving their black side. Right. You know what I'm saying? They weren't trying to be the white. They loved being the black. You know? For if Marcus Garvey was a man, I'll show you how black he was. In his organization, which was called the UNIA, right, he made sure that all black baby girls had black dolls to play with. Mm. You know? Beautiful. You know what I mean? That mentality was so powerful to make sure that all black daughters had black baby dolls to play with. And that was a, a ruling. They had snatched all the little white dolls out the children's hand and replaced it with black baby dogs, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To show them, say, we're gonna love ourselves from youth, no you know? Right. So I'm here with a brethren of mine by the name of Bumani, who I've known for several years, and he's been doing several works back and forth from the continent, you know, as a real African, supporting Africa, and defending Africa, and bringing Africans from America to Africa again. He's been doing this, how long, my bro? Uh, yes, our family have been taking uh, our brothers and sisters back to the mother continent for, since uh, 2006. Uh, so literally 13 straight years. Wow. 13 straight years, December man. December 2006 to December 2019. 2020, y'all stay focused. Yeah. 13 years, this brother been traveling back people black and forth to Africa, you know. And he doing it how many times a year, my bro? Uh, yes, I uh, have multiple tours. Um, um, uh, to different countries uh, and definitely uh, to the Ghana every May and December. Uh, since we have investment projects there, we just uh, bring our groups to show them what we're doing in the country. So you get more than just a tour. Hey, listen, uh, listen, listen. This, this man here is doing mighty works, you know, because I've seen and known people he's taken with him on trips back and forth to Africa, you know what I'm saying, and it changed their life. I've seen people also move to Africa. You know what I'm saying? Because the brother got people investing their time and energy into Africa. If you go on this brother trip, you literally getting everything you need. Mm. You ain't just needing anything. This brother provides everything for you. You know what I'm saying? To the point is, all you got to do is pay the money to get there, right. and everything else he got for you covered. I'm right. talking about when everything, the plan is set to where your whole trip is already set 
till you get to see the realness of the country right. and not no tourist business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's taking people black and forth to the dungeons. You know what I'm saying? Right. Great, great work. So I'm thankful, man, to have this brother on the show, you know what I'm saying, doing the works he do for us as a people. Because we don't realize the opportunities for us in Africa. You know, we, we, we've yet to even touch the opportunities for us in Africa because we are so caught up in thinking we got an opportunity where? In America. Right? We look at it, America as what? The land of what? The land of what? Huh? Oppression, capitalism. Oh, but they tell you it's the land of opportunity. They tell you constantly it's the land of opportunity, but we don't get to realize our true opportunities is in Africa. But Bumani, Bill, with a man, tell us more about yourself and what you're doing, man. I just have to introduce you and let them know who you are. But you, my brother, man, do your thing, man. Let us know. Uh, yes, family, as uh, we always talk about solutions and things like that, I'm one of the ones that, uh, you know, ever since I started studying uh, from 2003 to 2004, those foundation years, I was letting people know that when, I'm, when, I, when I study all of the great uh, legends and the history and the roots and culture, I come up with a different solution. I come up with a solution as far as, you know, uh, that equals uh, repatriation. True. And repatriation is that true reconnection to the land of our ancestors for nation building. Right. You can so, say that again. You know what I'm saying? Literally, Serious. Literally, literally, literally. <laughs> say that again. Yeah, yeah. yeah repa re repatriation, repatriation is what? Repatriation is that true reconnection to the uh, mother continent for nation building. And that's us organizing ourselves for economic empowerment and literally connecting with our brothers and sisters to carve a new future in Africa for our children and to make Africa that stronghold and strong nation it should be. But if we have 100% of the black folks in this country uh, that's telling you we built America, we did this, we did that, uh, then we'll never get to expand on our options. It's like, you know, I, I side with our brothers and sisters uh, for the, you know, for, you know, for fighting for what you believe in. I'm just always saying not 100% of us. So if 95% of us was doing what we're doing here, and then we have 5% strong energy on the African continent, putting together economic connections, like, you know, these things I talk about, repatriation of Pan-African communities, where the, the common person from the diaspora can have a better, true connection on, on the African continent to where you're, you're reintegrated back into African society. You're also put in a situation where your skills and your talent could be used in a community or used in a cooperative session to where, you know, you're very useful. And then also the skills that you have, you're able to train and teach your own brothers and sisters and own children uh, and then you know so mm -hmm. and it's a situation where uh, it's this it's up to us to make Africa what we want it to be and it's based on participation right. uh, so I'm not one of the people that's into governments and this and that the people come together and say this is what we want to do as a people and you know because um, you know based on you know you just depend on government you just be chasing these people two-party system getting confused from the left to the right. right. So the mm -hmm. true repatriation is really us putting together what we need to build. You know, so uh, when you're talking about building communities, you're talking about, you know, you're going to need power, you need water, you need, you know, and certain things. And I'm always one proposing that let's build it from the ground up. Right. Uh, think about the communities that we all live in. Uh, some of us own our house, some of us are renters. But uh, what the, the thing that we know that we don't own is that power company, that water company, the telecom company, that all of us faithfully... Uh, just turn our money over to every month uh, and then uh, we look outside from the gas station, the stores, the shops, the bars, the clubs, mm -hmm. the entire scene, uh, how the public works or, uh, or community development or whatever goes on is like we know we have little to no investment in that. Right. So imagine us on the African continent connecting with our own brothers and sisters and we're putting our minds together in groups and say hey this is what we should design and, and make it work to where now your children and your family have you know, an economic investment. Uh, you don't have to wake, wake up every day and stressing about uh, paying for this and paying for that because you and your community owns it. And the only thing that you have to do as a, a community member is do your part. Right. And it kind of takes you back into the true uh, African society with a modern day 21st century sustainable twist to it to where you're, you're you know, you're, in, you're now modifying what, uh, you know, an ancient system of, from, from, of like people see huts. You know, that's a, a certain system, but that's also a system that you build upon uh, to where you create something a little more unique. So all the concept of everything you need for survival, from even building materials, 
uh, sustainable, the continent provides it. So, you know, you're telling people that let's invest in that gold mine of potential opportunities. And I know it's not as simple as that, but that's why we created this company called Africa for Africans Tours and Investment. You connect into the country on, on a tour or you get more documentation about the country. And then once you get there, you connect now into investment. And then now you meet other similar people just like you on the same mission. And now you don't have to deal with the distraction of, of all of the drama that goes on in America, distracting us from actually doing the work that we actually need to do together. And I know that's a whole lot of family, but uh, that's kind of the foundation what I'm looking to build here as far as solutions. Yeah, man. Oh, that's great, brother. Nah, and that's a real solution, that's man. It all. That's a real solution. What you got to yeah. say to that sincere, man? That's a real solution. I'm loving that. Oh, brother, I love it. And um, it's right in line with the conversations uh, that I have with the uh, community. I was a part of the system and um, for years um, I would hear things like this. And I would take a look around uh, at my community, at my people. Nobody's talking about Africa. Nobody knows much about Africa. Uh, we would much rather go to European places. Uh, we would much rather go in the places that we think is better than where our ancestors started. Like our greatness started somewhere. So, so I had to ask the question, okay, well, if my ancestors, I started to read about my ancestors, I started to read about Kemet and Kosh and mm -hmm. uh, Ethiopia, so right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so I would read about those places and I'm like, hold on, our greatness started somewhere before here. And, and this is years ago. But traveling the world, I started to see that everywhere that I went, Asia, Europe, uh, even Saudi Arabia, guess what I'm seeing? Like, I'm seeing evidence of my ancestors from the great continent of Africa. So, so I'm like, there needs to be a broader conversation that needs to be had. So I love what you're doing, and that is, like, it's introducing us to our story. It's reintroducing us to, to, to our greatness. So, so I love it. Uh, I 100% support it. And uh, these are conversations that need to be had because we say what we need to do but we don't plug into who's actually doing the work, right? So, so I've had uh, a chance to not only connect with this great brother, but his brother's like uh, uh, one of our great scholars, uh, Professor James Small. We've had this type of conversation, uh, uh, and he does tours, and it's uh, uh, brothers like Anthony Browder, uh, uh, that wrote the Browder Files, and uh, uh, also uh, now Civilization Contributions. Like race giants, you know, right. Churches, uh, explorers, brothers out there. Absolutely. Organizing and connecting this. Uh, because it can't all be about America. No, 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 brother. Uh, uh, and the, the consistent conversation that I hear is, well, our ancestors built here. Right. Well, our ancestors built everywhere. So why not go back to the origin right. Uh, right. of that greatness? Why not go back so you can put your feet in that soil a, oh, why not connect with your people there? There's, a, there's a, a prophecy in the Bible that says um, the stone which the builder refused shall always be the head cornerstone. <laughs> right? No doubt. Bob Marley wrote a song about yeah, it too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the fullness is of the, of the prophecy because everything is a parable in, 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 you know, in the prophecy. So the stone which the builder refused is Africa. That's the solid stone. Right. I and I as the people are the ones who's refusing the stone. Mm. But it shall always be the head cornerstone. No doubt. You know, so right. Africa is already the giant on the planet. Mm. Let's be real about that. You know, this is the giant on the planet. Right. They make it like it's small, but this is the giant on the planet, right. right? So when this giant wake up, you know what I'm saying, and, and unite and unify, because we need this to wake up over here too, because we got to trade. No doubt. We got to keep bartering and trading going on. We got to export and import because there's ways to do that, and its means are very cheap. They make things so much difficult, but now that we got our hands on controlling you know, more things on how things move, we now can uh, 
help one another. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Move things. Because Africans already move in cars, you know what I'm saying, from, Af from America already to Africa. You know no what I'm saying? No Most cars selling right now is going straight to South Africa. Mm. They make South Africa to look small. It takes three and a half days to get from Cape Cairo to Johannesburg, mm. right? That's three and a half days just in South Africa alone, right? They make it look small, but Africa is really the giant on the planet. You know what I mean? Because it's the biggest continent. Right. And, and you know what I'm saying? Just, just look at this, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, look at this map. Yes, sir. Uh, Africa is the heart of our world as we know it. True. Take your heart out of your body and see mm -hmm. how well you do with this living situation. True, right. <laughs> she can't do it. You're not going to make it. It's true, it's true, it's true. You're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And see, everybody else gets that. That's why there's such a big Asian presence now mm -hmm. in, in Africa. That's true, that's true. Because, see, the whole thing is, they know that everything else is built out and did what it's going to do. You know what I'm saying? But Africa still has great potential. All the natural resources are there. You know what I'm saying? The best food grow there. Right. You know, there's so much food even over here we miss being in America that we never even tried. People scared to even eat a mango still. <laughs> you know. Right. You, you can't even give them a papaya. Right. You know, but these are their native foods. You know what I'm saying? All these things natively come from the motherland. But we have been conditioned in the Western Hemisphere to adapt our minds, our eating habits, you know what I'm saying, to this ways of the world. That's why this whole corona thing is big. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Here's a thought. Here's just a thought, mm -hmm. right? Right. Just a thought if the coronavirus wasn't a virus, right? Right. It literally was just you yourself being at one with the creator, taking care of your own health, and focus more on your truly own self, right? right? right. If this was a virus because of that. Right. If it wasn't that type of virus, but the virus was if you're not taking care of yourself and getting closer to the creator right. and taking care of your health. Oh, brother, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's big. Because they're watching big. things they, they're touching, but no one's watching what they're eating. You know, no one's, no one's watching what they're saying. Right. Right. No one's watching what they're doing. Right. No one. But they actually washing their hands and walking around with sanitizers <laughs> and wearing masks. <laughs> right? right? So just a thought. This is just a thought, you know, just you got, imagine. You got but differently, though, here. back to the story, you know what I'm saying, and, and what we're dealing with is the solution. Mm -hmm. The solution is us investing in Africa again. Like the brethren said, look how many people, if you ask them right now, let's take a trip out the country. Right. You know what most people, even if so many people dead in Rome right now, they still would say they'd rather go to Rome right. or go to Paris right. before they say, take a trip to the motherland. You know what I mean? Let me see if I can invest and live in the motherland. What's over there? What's good? Yeah. Right. Because we've been brainwashed to really disconnect ourselves from what's ours. You know, to the point is people say, no, we, we from here too, like you say. Right, right. People from here, but I ask you this, if you're from here, if you have any relatives that was a slave, you really wasn't from here. Mm. Let's stay real right there for a second. <laughs> Let's stay real right there for a second. If you don't have no relatives that wasn't a slave, okay, yeah. You, weren't, you, you were here. But if you had relatives, this was the relatives, like going down the line, down to about your great-grandparent, about, about your great-great-grandparent, if they weren't a slave, then, then yeah, 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 I can see you, you probably was here. You know what I'm saying? But all those who had four parents that were slaves right. didn't come here, okay? They were bought here. Let's stay focused on the realness, because we get so distracted nowadays. Right. I don't know what's going on with the youth, man. Easily. It's so distraction, so many distractions. Somebody can come up with one thing and change the whole reality of what's real. You know what I'm saying? And that's not real. We got to stick to the facts. We were bought here as captives. You know what I'm saying? And we have to return. We should be focused always on two things. Two things. You know, two things. I'm going to tell you what two things are. What's up? Reparations, okay. repatriation. Mm. 
Say it again. Right. Reparations and repatriation. Yeah. Because we didn't actually come here. We shouldn't have to pay to leave here. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Double time, too. We got to pay to get back, too. We can't even take a one-way trip. Imagine that. Sitting there focused on you've been here. Okay, you've been captive and kept here. And we have to realize that 400 years of captivity is done. You understand it's time for Africans to unite together again. Africans on the continent with Africans all over the world again. You know what I'm saying? And then we get our full power and our unity back again. Because unity is the power. That's it. You know what I'm saying? We got to break all the borders with Jamaica, with Canada, with Haiti, with any island, with any portion of the earth that we did, Brazil, anywhere the black man and black woman did, we break it down to our real descendant place is Africa. That's our people. That's our so family. So we got to get forward to African descendants again. Right. You know what I'm saying? We got to even drop this whole thing. Y'all dropping stuff. Drop African-American. All right, let that go too. It's time for that to go too. You can no longer be an African American. Let's get real. You have to accept yourself as an African descendant. All right, stay there. Stay there on African descendant because then you stay focused on where you really come from. You know what I'm saying? A Chinese man can't say he's a, a Chinese American. Huh? They don't accept that. He can't do it. They don't accept that. You know, we buy into these little titles and we forget what we truly from. That's why I'm glad we're here building my brother Tyane Bay because he's giving you the solution to what can be done. Where we can really see where we come from, what's really going on on the land, connect with ones. Beautiful stories came out the land, man, since you've been there. I know, man. We got to show some of the footage, too, of the land. He got pictures of that. We're going to make sure that get up on the screen, too, because wow. y'all got to see the reality of what the brother doing. Tell them how they can reach you, man. Uh, yes, uh, family, um, uh, you can uh, 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 visit our website, africaforTheAfricans.org, and you can also uh, just search me on um, this online, Bomani Tayemba, and that's uh, spelled B-O-M-A-N-I, and uh, Tayemba, T-Y-E-H-I-M-B-A, uh, so uh, Bomani Tayemba. And uh, also, uh, while you're uh, there searching uh, online, uh, that just give you access to this uh, whole lot of photos on Facebook, a uh, whole lot of videos on YouTube, and mm -hmm. it's just literally just documentation, and we're in that era where we, we have documented uh, the works of what we're doing as far as repatriation, since it's one of those movements uh, that have never gotten the, the, you know, the, the strength and energy that it should have. Uh, so I you know, appreciate the energy of Marcus Garvey and the energy of those before him and those after him that have laid that foundation for those of us in this uh, modern day 21st century to put together a powerful program and powerful ideas of how we can do this. Uh, but uh, uh, another thing to our family, once you are on our website, AfricaForTheAfricans.org, it's just a um, reflection of just a lot of tours and not only the tours, but once you click on the details, it gives you full itinerary, full overview, full general terms, full preparation information, visa details, and so on. And the same thing with the land. So I'm one of the people that believe in that, you know, you give people access to all the information that they need, let them process it. And then uh, we do a lot of uh, communication uh, throughout the day, you know, just answer a lot of emails and so on. I got a question. Uh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, the question I have for you, too, is um, how is it with the process of one's uh, requiring a visa? How is that process going? And, and tell us more about that. Uh, yes, uh, the visa process is not that bad. Uh, f uh, for those interested, uh, they can uh, even visit the, um, the Ghana uh, Embassy in Washington, D.C. Uh, as far as on their, their website, there's also a consulate in New York and also one in uh, Houston. Uh, the one that we usually just recommend is just to go to the, um, the, the, the main uh, Ghana Embassy in the U.S., uh, which is in D.C. Mm -hmm. So what you do is uh, you uh, print out the actual uh, application and uh, what you want to do is just organize the rest of your documents, uh, your two passport style photo. Once you fill out the first application, you sign, date it, and make another copy so you have two application and two passport style photo. And it's stapled to the top right. Uh, next thing you'll need is um, like a letter from the bank or a bank statement or just the first part of, a, of what you would call like a bank printout. Just to show your name, your address, and make sure it matches up with everything else. Uh, you also want to put a flight itinerary. Just to show your flight schedule. Uh, in reflection also to your application. 
Uh, it's $100 for a multiple entry, and that gives you anywhere from a minimum of one to five years of continuous traveling back and forth into Ghana. Uh, once you have all of those uh, documents and everything uh, together, and then uh, you, you, know, you write the money order to the Embassy of Ghana, you uh, make copies of everything and you put it in the pre, uh, you know in, in, in like one of those little folders. But the most important thing you want to do is get a pre uh, prepaid return envelope that you're going to put in that package also. That way, once you and then everything you want to have, you know, you want to get it with tracking outgoing and returning. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, you can just track your documents uh, for a certain purpose and make sure you have copies of everything in case of em emergency. But that's really it. It's like a seven to ten day process once they receive it. So seven to uh, ten days. You know, so it's just, and, and those are things that you know we just send someone an email and then we go through it with them. We also go through it on conference calls, and then you're clear and if anything that they need or they get stuck with, or if you're from another country and the, the policies may be a little different, like in Canada, mm -hmm. then we just provide you with the invitation letter, and a few things that you need. Uh, but it's just in a basic administration of paperwork. True. Man, give thanks for that sound, Bumani. Respect, yeah. man. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, that's going to help a lot of people right there, man. Yeah, for real, for real, yeah, because yeah. that's what it's about. I got to tell you, we got to deal with the solution. You know, we ain't dealing with the problem. We're oh, telling yeah. you what the solution is. Right. You know so what I'm saying? Everybody needs to get passports. Yes, indeed, and passports, <laughs> mainly. You can't now, get a visa if you don't have a passport. Now, all right, tell them about that, too. Tell them about the passport a little bit. Uh, yes, uh, as we talk about visa, visa is just give you access to a country um, and... Um, some countries require visa, some countries don't, but in the case of the countries that we travel to, like Ghana and the Gambia, those visa information have to be filled out and prepared. And not all countries give visa on arrival, but before we even get into the, the whole business of visa, we have so many people who don't have passport. I worked at the Atlanta airport uh, for many years. Talk about it. And, man, when you start talking to people about a passport, some people literally did not know what a passport is. It was like they asked me if they can go to this country with a driver's license and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes. you know, a lot has changed since uh, then, but, you, you know, you let people know that they got to get into the game. Because I remember paying for a passport, and it was like 50 bucks mm -hmm. when I, on my first one, maybe like, that was like 20 years ago. Right. And since then, I've had three passports, but, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, it, the price is going to always go up. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's one of those things where if you're thinking about that, you know, you know what we're talking about, Africa... You just gotta get get there, and uh, you know, and it's it's a simple process like anything else. Welcome uh, to it, man. Tell them about the passport. How yeah, and even the passport, you go into the travelstate.gov website, mm -hmm. and then from there, you know, Say it's that again, the word? it's our travelstate.gov. It's a you know the U.S. travel yes, uh, site yes, to get access to you know passports and things like that, or updates and things like that. Mm -hmm. right. So once you fill out online information, you just print it out and you take it to the post office, and it's literally telling you that. Either you need a birth certificate or a social security card, or you need passport photos or the, the few documents that you need. True, true. Um, uh, and then you, once you submit that with your money, uh, you're good to go. You're looking at about about a month to two months. Right. Uh, so a lot has changed since uh, since then, but uh, it's one of those things where individuals have to just follow that process. And if it's not something available, it, it'll let them know when it'll be available. Just like some countries are not open to process visas right now. Uh, mm -hmm. So people are in like a limbo that's on hold. But that's why you always tell folks, uh, literally prepare ahead of time. So right. now when things open up again, you know, you want folks to just focus on like getting what you need to get in place. Mm -hmm. And then for those who talk about doing anything in Africa, you know, and then you're thinking about business plan and things like that. It's, not, it's serious business. Right. And people like right. myself is available to help us connect with uh, anything in reference to like tours and investments. And I do consultation mm -hmm. and, you know, do my best to connect people with the people that they need. And what I do is, like, you know, you, you can just call me. It's not a situation where I have any charges for anyone. Because before we get into any level of business, you need to be clear about what business you're getting into. You're getting and right. I don't want to have to be giving you a bunch of charges up front before you even be clear about what you're doing with us. So that's why I have access to information on our website. And I have access to just going through things with individuals and having uh, public and also private conference calls in reference to it. Uh, so, like, if you travel with me, we got you on WhatsApp, like a nice little private uh, page to connect you with everybody else, and all the updates are going through that network. Yeah. So, it's, you know, it's, it's serious business. It's work, and, you know, you have to be prepared for the game. But I spent, um, right. this, you know, from 2004 traveling around the continent, been to nine countries, and it's, it's incredible. It's, it's just where we need to be as a people, but Give us I can understand. Some of the countries you've been to. Yeah, so I've been to Senegal, the Gambia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ghana, Togo, Benin, those five countries are in West Africa. Been to uh, South Africa, 
uh, Ethiopia and Kenya in uh, East Africa and then Northeast Africa, Egypt. And, and that's a span from 2004 to 2019, 15 straight years of traveling on the continent consistently, yes, uh, many different uh, journeys and I've taken over 400 plus brothers and sisters uh, you know, on, on, on the tours uh, that we do. You know, for ones checking in, I'm thankful my brother's coming out, you know what yes, I mean? Yes. We're building on these issues because yeah. these are topics we got to know about and uh, I need to take time and uh, rewind, you know, soak in some of this information because this is the things we have to be focused on, which are two things, reparations and repatriation. So this will be a tool to help you along the way. And this is... The Thank Champs. Champs and yes. the Greetings family, this is the organizer Bomani Tayemba and I'm here to talk about our Black Star repatriation and Pan-African community in Jahadzi, Ghana and that is in the uh, central region of Ghana and that is an, an incredible 15 acre plus 50 acre uh, site uh, setup to build our full community uh, based on black economics and black empowerment. And uh, the information for the reference of what I'm talking about is on our website, africafortheafricans.org. And while you're on our website, then you click on the link, information for Black Star Pan-African Community. And once you click on that link, you're gonna get access to all the details from introduction to getting started and in reference to our community. Now the uh, setup and connection with the community we started uh, started in September 2019. Uh, so it's July 2020, so literally 10 months ago. But uh, what I want to do is connect you into how we got here. Um, from traveling to Africa in 2004, uh, to, to, to go into different countries, including Senegal, the Gambia, South Africa, Kenya, and uh, and also eventually uh, uh, Ghana. And uh, once I got to Ghana in 2006, I realized it was a beautiful connection and a country that uh, I feel like we can just literally build a future in. And at that stage, I was literally doing a lot of research and just you know, traveling the African continent. But that's when we started building our program, uh, Africa for Africans Tours and Investment. And the tours get you connected to a wonderful country like Ghana, but then the investment opened your mind up so throughout that time frame, from 2006 until now, we've been doing a lot of research on getting access to land or also trying to connect with other black people who have uh, you know, land or community so we can work together to build a nice uh, pan-African slash uh, African diaspora or repatriation community. Uh, so that is, uh, sounds wonderful and nice, but uh, it took this many years of trying to work with different groups and, and different groups and to the point where um, last year after this getting fed up with the last group, um, we decided to put our money together and recruit our own lawyer and put our own uh, administrative team together and build a community from the ground up. Basically get access to a wonderful beach property, uh, that's a beach access property that's two miles away from the beach and also about two miles away from Winneba for those who are familiar with Ghana. Uh, that area is about an hour and a half from the capital city Accra and about an hour and a half away from Cape Coast. So it's in the middle of the two more popular cities in Ghana. And so this is a virgin land of 15 acres that we're able to see on our December 2019 tour. And from there, we basically just put all elements of how we're gonna design this together. So this is a very well detailed planned out based on our experience as far as getting us to understand that uh, based on what's going on in the world today, let's put together energy for solutions. And so solutions is putting your money together and reconnecting to the African continent with a nice solid game plan to build black economics. Uh, individuals want to go by themselves, that's absolutely fine. But if you're trying to make sure your money extends and you put together all of the, um, the strength and numbers uh, uh, that you need, you really want to build more of a community or build more of a group settings. So the group that uh, we have, it's a nice energy of 60 brothers and sisters from the African diaspora. And we have room for more on our 50 acres that we're expanding to. So it's a situation where we're looking to get land clear and, also, and laid out so we can start building. But the other situation is that we've been able to organize legal paperwork for our group members. So we have it set for a 99 year lease. We have a land search, land survey, 
uh, memorandum of understanding between us and the chief as far as the land and everything is legally signed, lawyer, documented, high courts and so on. So, uh, you know, one, it's one of those situations where people may hear about uh, land and can you trust this and trust that. So on our website, africaforafricans.org, we have literally all of the documentation about this community and then we have a nice email that we, we can always link or connect people to if they want to send an email at AFTA2010 at msn.com and, and then from there on we can like literally just really just get you all the information for you to uh, you know, basically fill out the application, uh, get all your documents together, sign off on the overview and also uh, sign off on the uh, bylaws. So we have an incredible overview and also bylaws that we have to sign off on. And the overview does have all the rules, regulations, uh, prime objective, what our community is about, uh, the land costs, uh, the process, cancellation, refund, uh, pictures, videos, access to, so you can uh, basically link uh, and get access to all of the videos to see the land, see us meeting the chief, uh, us doing conference call, uh, us uh, literally connecting, doing different things. Uh, photos of the land itself, us connecting, uh, that's another link uh, we have on Facebook. So that whole setup that we have there on our website literally give you a nice feel to where you can process the information to be clear about what's going on and not just somebody saying, hey, you want to get land in Africa and it's that simple. And then we have private groups that we have set up and also private committees that each of us uh, participate in different committees. That way we can literally have an organizational structure of how we're going to lay out and, and, and put the work together, basically just you know, doing creative thinking. So it's a well thought out structure uh, enterprise of, which would be about a total of 65 acres of land. And our goal is to start building within the next uh, few months once we finalize and clear our last few payments. And right now in our stage of organizing, that's what we're doing, this meeting, connecting, introducing each other, networking, and just opening ourselves up to connect other people who may be open to the same clarity of our project as far as repatriation.